Hi, my name is Nika Andriessen. I'm a project manager in the research group on management of excreta, wastewater and sludge, or MUSE, at EAVAG. If I asked you how many fish were in this lake, how would you estimate that? Even more complicated, what if I asked you how many of each species there were? It is difficult to estimate since fish are all underwater and you can't see them. This is an analogy for the problem facing us in quantifying and characterizing fecal sludge. Fecal sludge is stored underground, typically without records of what is there or how it's managed. But like the fish, we can develop methods to make reasonable estimations. Following this module, you will be able to understand differences in quantifying excreta and fecal sludge along the service chain, explain why making a weighted average is better than using a citywide average, and understand the theory behind the methodology presented in the Methods for Fecal Sludge Analysis book. The book can be downloaded free of charge from our website. I will use the term Q and Q to refer to fecal sludge quantities, so accumulating volumes, and qualities, the characteristics. Let's first consider quantification. It is important to realize that volumes of excreta produced per capita per day are not equal to what actually accumulates in on-site containments, or what will be delivered to treatment facilities. In this figure, number one is the amount of excreta that is produced, so feces and urine, which alone are not fecal sludge. Number two is the amount of fecal sludge that is produced, so excreta plus what is going into the containment along with it, like cleansing material or flush water. This is a much higher volume than number three, which is what is actually accumulating inside the containment. Accumulated fecal sludge takes into account varying levels of biological degradation, as well as any infiltration or leaching. But it is difficult to calculate, as these rates are mostly unknown. Number four is fecal sludge that is not collected and is unsafely entering the environment. For example, what runs from an outlet into a storm drain, or when people break a containment and let it drain out directly into the environment. Number five is fecal sludge that is collected, but not delivered to treatment. For example, because there is no suitable place for discharge available. Number six is what we want to see. Fecal sludge that is collected and delivered to a treatment plant or legal discharge location. Accumulation rate is difficult to calculate, but it is important because for safe emptying and treatment, this is the amount that ultimately needs to be managed. It represents the total future demand. If a treatment plant is designed based on volume estimates for the current demand, what is going to happen when the treatment plant opens? The current demand will immediately increase because there is now a legal and convenient option for the disposal of fecal sludge. And so the treatment plant is immediately under capacity. This is why it is important to also evaluate the future demand which is based on the total fecal sludge accumulation. Methods for measuring accumulation rates are mentioned in the Methods for Fecal Sludge Analysis book, for example, with a Volaser device as shown here. Quantities of fecal sludge cannot be considered without simultaneously considering the qualities in order to understand loadings, which are needed to adequately design infrastructure and management solutions. For wastewater, it is relatively straightforward to make assumptions to predict quantities and qualities, as it is typically known how many household connections there are to a sewer and average per capita water usage. But for fecal sludge, there are typically no records of the existing situation, and so we don't know how many on-site sanitation systems there even are, which types, or how many people are using them. Both quantities and qualities are highly variable, so there are no standard per capita values. In addition, fecal sludge arrives batchwise to treatment, 
and is not homogenized during transportation. Without standard approaches to make estimates, fecal sludge treatment plants are frequently built under or over capacity with negative impacts on public and environmental health and financial resources. What we need is a way to average out the complexity that is seen at the individual containment level and zoom out to be able to make a weighted average so that we know what needs to be managed at community to citywide scales. One problem with making predictions is that quantities and qualities of fecal sludge typically do not follow a normal distribution. For normally distributed data, mean and standard deviation provide useful summary statistics. However, if the data is skewed, using the mean is not very representative as extreme data points influence it disproportionately. Therefore, summary statistics that can deal with non-normal data are needed, such as the median with confidence intervals. This also means that if we just make a citywide average to predict quantities and qualities, we know it will not be meaningful. As we will see, that is why we use a weighted average of the medians in different categories of data. The Q&Q methodology described in the Methods for Fecal Sludge Analysis book uses statistics to find categories of data that have different ranges of characteristics and accumulation rates to then make a weighted average for a specific location. For example, what if fecal sludge from households always had a higher total solids concentration? Or if public toilets also had a higher ammonia concentration? And taking it one step further, Maybe household septic tanks are different from commercial septic tanks. Based on our experience, quantities and qualities of fecal sludge can be grouped by these categories we call demographic, environmental, and technical data, or DET. These are all examples of DET data that might potentially correlate with fecal sludge quantities or qualities. Here is an example from Kampala where we analyze total solids concentration by categories of debt. We see here that total solids concentrations for containment type and income level were statistically significantly different, which is represented by the notches around the median. In this way, we can separate out categories of data to use when making weighted averages. For example, high and low income level or septic tank and pit latrine. Keep in mind that correlation does not mean causation. Income level alone is not a direct cause of why qualities might be different, but there could be a correlation which can help us in making predictions. Once the most statistically different categories are identified, we then use these values to make a weighted average. For example, if the accumulation rates for a city served by septic tanks and pit latrines were 25 liters per capita in a year for pit latrines, which are used by a million people, and 190 liters per capita in a year for septic tanks, which are used by 100,000 people, just taking a simple average of the two accumulation rates would yield 107, whereas taking the weighted average for the entire city would yield 40 liters per capita in a year quite different values. In contrast, if a transfer station was being designed for a specific area within the same city, estimated to serve 500 residents with pit latrines and 1,000 with septic tanks, the weighted average would be 135 liters per capita in a year, a value 3.4 times greater than using the citywide value. To summarize, these are the key takeaways to remember after this module. The volume of accumulated fecal sludge is not the same as the volume of fecal sludge produced, but is highly important for current and future planning. Fecal sludge quantities and qualities are often not normally distributed, which requires summary statistics that represent the non-symmetrical distribution, such as the median instead of the mean. Making a weighted average based on statistically significant debt categories is better than using one citywide average. 
For more information, you can find the book chapter and other relevant readings on our website.